from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for the podcaster that wonders what landlubbers means. Uh, so I'm going to have to look that up later. If you do know, I mean, you'll be hearing this a few months after I record it, but let me know because maybe I forgot. Either I forgot to look it up or I forgot what it meant again. Because you say landlubber. No, I'm a land lover, man. I love living on land and standing on it. Uh, sea, sea liker, land lover. Uh, sea appreciator. What about, oh, plasma? I don't know. I haven't encountered any, like, I haven't lived in a plasma zone. I've gone swimming, lived on the land. You know, the air, that's a whole different story. Pla- I would love to, to say I'm a plas- plasma lover. Lubber. Sorry. Oh, I'm trying to kick off a sleep podcast here. If you're confused, then you're in the right place. Because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive. Have you tried the Name Your Price tool yet? It works just the way it sounds. You tell Progressive how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you coverage options that fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote, and you'll be able to find a rate that works for you. It's just one of the many ways you could save with Progressive. Get your quote today at Progressive.com and see why four out of five new auto customers recommend Progressive. Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. And I'm just celebrating my 1.5 year anniversary with my Helix Dusk Lux. And that Helix Dusk Lux is worth celebrating because it's been supporting me night after night, keeping me comfortable and fitting my needs in the way I sleep. And I can remember it like it was yesterday when we first met. I took that Helix quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep. It was just a two-minute quiz. It matched my body type uh, and my needs, my sleep preferences to the right mattress. Because why would anyone buy a mattress made for someone else? With Helix, you're getting the perfect mattress you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. And there I was. I was somebody looking to sleep cool. I sleep on my stomach. I sleep on my side. I was looking for something comfortable. Everybody's unique. And that's what's great about Helix. Helix, they know that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. Soft, medium, firm mattresses. Great for cooling you down. Great for spinal alignment to prevent morning aches and pains. And it's so simple. You're looking for a mattress just like I was. You just take that quiz. You order the mattress you're matched to. It comes right to your front door. You don't have to go to a mattress store. You don't have to set up for delivery. Shipped for free. Helix has been recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors of sleep medicine and is a go-to solution for improving sleep. And all you need to do is go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. It also comes with a 10-year warranty and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix even has financing options and flexible payment plans, so a great night's sleep is never far away. So Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. That's helixsleep.com slash sleep. Get over there. Take your sleep quiz. Let me know about it. Helixsleep.com slash sleep. Thanks, everybody. All righty, everybody. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast. I need you here. When your hand hits that fridge tomorrow, remember, this is where I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors, how we're able to be here for you for free. I'm trying to do these as fast as I can. I want to thank Chocola, who supported ZocDoc. Let ZocDoc know about it. Let me know about it. Filled out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. I sent out some stickers. So if you support a sponsor, tag them, tag me. Let them know about it. Let them hear about it, that it's important that they support Support Sleep With Me, and then fill out the form at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. That's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part is you getting the support you need. There's links to resources in the show notes that you can connect with, international resources, and it's about supporting the members of our community with actions that say Black Lives Matter, that say Stop AAPI Hate. And one organization I support is the Student Freedom Initiative. It's at studentfreedominitiative.org. You'll see a link in our show 
show notes. And it's a nonprofit organization dedicated to ensuring freedom in professional and life choices for students attending minority serving institutions. And it works in close collaboration with schools and other organizations to provide uh, funding and tools and resources to enhance the higher education experience and broaden student outlooks. You can learn more at studentfreedominitiative.org. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mr. Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes too. Ashley, Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team. Let us down. They're on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators you Get support your scooter on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bard. Don't forget to sign up for our referral program at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake. It could be thoughts on your mind. Obviously, that makes sense. Thoughts from the past, present, the future. It could be uh, feelings, anything emotionally you're experiencing or coming up for you or that's already there. Physical sensations, changes in time or temperature or routine. It could be your work schedule. You could work the second or third shift or the fourth, fifth, and sixth shifts that I love so much. They say, Scoots, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, and they, 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 the, the clock barons have tried to explain it to me. They called me up, uh, and I said, do, do workplaces still have that? I remember, what workplace? Okay, when I worked at a grocery store, we had a clock where you punched in. Then I had one where you punched in a number. Then I had one where you swiped a card. And all those companies called me and the representatives. They said, there's no such thing as a fourth. Or f-. They said, technically... You know, some comp- you know, some types, and I said, yeah, my brother works in a department, and he works on a different shift. And they said, yeah, but you can't even get to six shifts. They, ch- they, they change those into names or letters. And I said, are you talking to me about irrelevance? Because uh, I said, I said, we're like, uh, and they said, we still got, you know, and I said, what do you, are you, are you also a, uh, what are those people called that, uh, they go and they, 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 uh, <laughs> can't even think of the word. They work on K street and they, they lobbyist. Are you also a lobbyist for the steam whistle barons? Uh, cause we still have a noon whistle once a month. Um, oh, I'm supposed to start a sleep podcast. Sorry about that. Talk about it, like, so, oh, whatever is keeping you awake. A lot of times it's something I don't mention. Whatever is going on with you, I'd like to take your mind off of that and keep you company while you fall asleep. And here's the reason why. You deserve a good night's sleep. The reason I make the show is because that is true. And if you get the rest you need, or if your night's just a little bit less uh, rough around the edges because I was there to keep you company, that's important to me. And, you know, I, I just want, I don't know, I want to put you in a place where you don't have to dread bedtime. And maybe it's this podcast or another podcast you discover through this show 
where you get a bedtime routine, and most of the time you can get the sleep you need and you deserve. The other reason I make it is because I've been there. Tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep. I've, I've, I've had it all. So that's when I make the show. So whatever's keeping me awake, I'm going to try to create a safe place where you could set that aside. I'm going to try to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, which are an acquired taste. But here's the thing. It's kind of like an acquired taste. Imagine this. Imagine put your social mores aside or mores or whatever that word is. Your social, you know, those things aside. Because when we talk about acquired taste, a lot of times I think about um, hard hard candy. That's one of the great analogies I use to try to describe the podcast that doesn't ever make any sense. But it kind of just barely makes sense. So when I say uh, this podcast and acquired taste and also that it's kind of a podcast you don't really listen to, it means what if someone, let's just say we lived in a world. I mean, we do live in a world with various hard candies or candies you would suck on. And they do come in a variety of flavors. And sometimes there's ones that might say, oh, this is like a, it's half bitter melon and half, I don't know, something else. And you say, it's this person that's giving it to you's favorite flavor. You've never had it before. And they say, it's an acquired taste. Now, they might mean you're supposed to suck on it for 15 minutes. But what if there was a world where it was this was 100% biodecomposable or whatever? This thing, like, saturated the soil. Or if it hit, you know, non-soil, it wasn't sticky. So you could just let it, you could just let it, you should say, okay, I'm going to suck on it for five seconds and I'm just going to let it drop out of my mouth. Uh, and then I'll have another one later. I'll bump it up to seven minutes. That's probably not a good analogy for this podcast now that I've spoken it, but uh, it kind of almost is like, it, it, you say, that scoots, that's not even an analogy. You've got the first part down. The, the the first part of the spelling of analogy, if you even, maybe your spelling's not even right. Uh, and maybe we could put it like A-S-I-N-E or something in there. I'd say like an, an asinine analogy, an asinolid, yeah, okay, I'll take that. Uh, oh, so the creaky dulcet tones are acquired taste. So creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents. I've already done a few of those. All that means is I'm going to get mixed up. I'm going to go off topic. I'm never going to get anywhere. Then I'm going to go back. Then I'm going to try to describe it and get mixed up again. All to take your mind off stuff and keep you company. But there's a few things you want to know if you're a regular listener. Or if you're you're a regular listener, you already know that I'm mixed up. Uh, if you're a new listener, this is a podcast you don't really listen to. That's why regular listeners are laughing. They say, Scoots, I didn't notice that till the third time. And I'd say, my faux pas? That was like, uh, how about that use of faux pas? I mean, almost we almost have a made-up word with combining analogy and asinine. Is asinine a bad word? I mean, and then I don't think it is. So how come it's not a bad word? It, oh, totally different root word, Scoots. Oh, thanks. Uh, didn't know that. Uh, did you just make that fact up? I did, but, uh, you know, the only reason I can think of it. You, I think it's probably because it's just, it, it, it's hard to spell. And even when you look at it, you say, what word is that? Uh, I mean, at least I do. Where if you look at A-double-S or an S-H word or something, you know what that is. Is it you think that's why? I don't know. It's perplexing. Yeah, maybe we should just stick with that answer. Different root word for sure. Different. Oh, the, the one comes from the Romantic languages, and one comes from the Plasmic languages. Okay, so let's get try to get back. Oh, it's a podcast you don't really listen to. I think you can you can understand why you kind of just listen to it loosely. A bit like if you were sucking on a candy without any expectations or you say, well, okay, let me just see how this goes. I don't think that's the best time to do it. You'd say, don't give me any candy. I'm not going to do that with candy. 
I'm just doing it for, I'm not asking you to actually do that because you might say this, but this is gross. Uh, if I'm going to have candy, I want it. And you say, well, you know, just for seven minutes. Uh, so, hmm. So, I don't know. So, uh, oh, j- just barely listen to me. This is also a podcast that doesn't really put you to sleep. It just keeps you company while you drift off, which is different, too. I- I'm not here to, I'm just here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar cuz, your boar sib, your boar bestie, your friend here in the deep dark night to keep you company, whether you're awake or asleep. So, if you can't sleep, I'll be here to the very end because you're important. But it's it's also important for me to keep you company, if, even if you're not listening, if you're asleep. So that's that's one, a couple of reasons why it also takes some getting used to. Most regular listeners so to say it takes two or three tries, at least, to get used to the show to the point where you say, "Oh, now I get it." Uh, every episode's like this in a different way. Because a lot of times you could be waiting for me to get started, and I say, well, boy, we're already going here. Regular listeners are like, this is uh, this is what Scoots is like. Yeah, we, we wanted to say this is peak Scoots, but it's more like uh, this, is, this, is what, this is what we come back for episode after episode. I don't think, I've, I mean, I don't want to claim this because I'm wrong, but I don't think I've used asinine very often in a po- in the podcast or faux pas. I mean, faux pas is like, my, it could be my middle name. You say, Scoots, if you were an animal, a quadruped animal, what would the things you, on you that you walk on be called? I'd say, my faux pas. Uh, so... There's a free joke-like thing for you. See, it's not quite a joke. He doesn't tell jokes. Uh, it's more like it's not humor. Okay, so a podcast you don't listen to doesn't really put you to sleep. It's very different. Takes some getting used to. The structure also throws a lot of new listeners off, particularly people that listen to a lot of podcasts. But even if you don't, because the structure is designed in a much different way because, you know, this is to put you to sleep and keep you company. We also have other goals. So it starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. So you feel welcome and seen. Then there's listener support for resources you might need. And just to acknowledge that and acknowledge the members of our community are important. Then there's support for the show so it can come out twice a week for free. Because one thing that might blow people's mind is the amount of hours it takes to make one of these episodes is probably, it's just, uh, could be mind blowing. But so that's the business. Then the intro, then there's the intro which we're almost done with, but the intro is really a show within a show. Some people skip it. Two to three percent of people skip it. A few percentage of people fall asleep during it. But for most listeners, the intro is a part of the wind down of the show, and it helps people get ready for bed or get in bed and get comfortable, or it's just a part of their wind down routine. They're doing something else and they're listening to the show. They're getting ready for bed. They're petting their pets. They're feeding their fish. Maybe they're raking, like they have one of those rock gardens, the mini ones, and they're raking the sand. I mean, that's a nice way to go to bed. You're doodling, you're cross stitching, you're knitting. Maybe you're tie. I always talk about it, tying knots or something, working with ribbons. Maybe you're doing, don't, probably not ribbon dancing is good for bedtime, but uh, maybe some ribbon twirling. But whatever it is, the intro is, it eases you into bedtime, gives you some distance from the day. Because some people think it's all one thing or one piece of housekeeping. I say, no, the intro is a pretty important, important part of the show. You just don't realize that until you're not listening to it, which, yeah, it's contradictory. A listener never understands the importance of intro until they don't hear it. And then they say, oh, boy, now I get it. I didn't realize how asinine Scoots was uh, so far that it makes sense. Uh, So... That's the intro. Then there's business between the intro and and the show. Again, so the podcast could be free twice a week. And paying for it could be optional. 
And then there's the story. Tonight will be our episodically modular series, Lady Witchbeard. And then there's the thank yous at the end. So this is a structure show. That's why I make the show. The only reason I say give a few tries is just that's what everybody that listens to the show says. And listen, I know it's tough. Uh, I know it's tough out there. And that's why I make the show. You deserve a good night's sleep. I wish this podcast worked for everybody, but it just doesn't. Uh, I have a website set up, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you with other sleep stuff. But I'm really glad you're here. I really help, uh, really hope I can help you f- fall asleep. I really appreciate you coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do it for you free twice a week. Hey, everybody, Scoots. Uh, before we move on here, I just want to let you know about uh, Sleep Phones. I don't know if you've ever checked out our Sleep Phone store lately. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash Sleep Phones. We've got custom Sleep Phones. We've got a bunch of new bands you could check out. Uh, it's the most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me. Soft headphones in a headband, perfect for bedtime. They have three different models, a corded one, a wireless one, and then one with wireless charging. Listeners love them. I love love them. I run in sleep phones. I I use sleep phones when I sleep on the road. I keep a pair in my suitcase all the time. And you could get yours. The most comfortable way to listen to sleep with me at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. And be sure to use the promo code sleep with me and it'll save you a little bit of money on your order. That's sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and use sleep with me uh, at checkout. Thanks everybody. All right, everybody, it's time for our uh, episodically modular series, Tales of Lady Witchbeard. Now, if you're new to the show or to Lady Witchbeard, don't worry. This could be your first episode. We designed it in an episodically modular way. So you could listen to them in any order. I'm going to catch up on everything you need to know. And uh, this could be your first episode. You could catch up on the other ones and you say, oh, those are like the prequels to this, the first episode I listened to. Uh, so let's give you the info then uh, so you can sleep easy. Maybe you're already asleep. You're looking great, by the way. There's nothing that calms me more really than the steady motion of a breath, uh, whether it's, you know, wherever I'm seeing it or I'm imagining it right now. That steady breath, uh, just like the few times I've seen Lady Witchbeard sleeping. She's a witch. She's a pirate. She's a he- he- her- heroine. Uh, she was once once living in a witch world, uh, you know, world like ours, but witch-based, a witch-based realm. But she said, this isn't really for me. The, just a witch-based life is not for me. She discovered a, a sea-based realm, the world of the 13 seas. And there she became a pirate and a witch, uh, both skills. Uh, I don't have the vocabulary, but, you know, they're not interdependent. Complementary skills, actually, piracy and witchcraft. Also, she, you know, she was one of the few uh, or the only witch-based pirates or pirate-based pirate and witch. Uh, so she had many adventures on the 13 Seas. I met her. We had some adventures and we just happen to be in a, a, an adventure now where it seems like, what, from what we can tell, that uh, a, 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 a human, I think from our, no, she was working in the pirate realm. Similar to the song, though, a, a, a woman named Brandy seems like she's a pirate at this point, though not an official pirate because there's no more pirate skill to confirm that you're a pirate. But Brandy is working with some witch conqueror who conquers realms or conquer, tried to conquer the witch-based realm and is trying to conquer it again. And they're trying to gelatinize the 13 seas, like turn them from water to a gelatin. I think for a bunch of reasons, uh, You'd say, why would anyone do that? I say, exactly. The sea's just fine as it is, uh, especially in the 13 seas, because they don't got us, you know, to deal with. But uh, I think it's like both like uh, for economic gain, power, control, and uh, maybe a little bit of uh, getting back at somebody underneath it. Uh, now, obviously, Lady Witchbeard's a pirate. Uh, she doesn't want the seas. She's with uh, Don Dankel, uh, Another pirate, uh, and myself, Daw, 
And so we, we figured out that that was a plan and that it was somehow related to this person called Wilts, uh, or hopefully I'll just call him Wilts. Well, I guess it's easier to say Wilts now. But Wilts was also known as the man who loved the sea more than Brandy in a song that somehow made it all the way to our world. Who would have thought, like, the multiverse or the transverse plane, as I call it, actually, they are different things. Like, the more... Who would have thought multiverse would get co like c continually co-opted by corporations uh, uh, and then redefined to say, okay, well, that's not what I'm talking about. N now, back when it was a Spider-Verse, that was a multiverse I could get, get behind. Uh, any any uh, any verse with Miles Morales and those other cool other versions, and even Loki's multiverse. I don't know if those are multiverses. So the transverse plane is more like that, uh, uh, endless whatever, but not like the end of Loki. But, so okay, I got mixed up there. Is any of that important? Just it was just interesting to me. That I think those there really are permeable layers between the universes, or maybe people do travel because the song Brandy, what a good life you could be, you, you know, something in the love of the sea. That song was not, I guess it was in a movie that happens in another universe too, so that does make sense. So, oh, okay, so. Oh, so the man who loved the sea, we were looking for the man who loved the sea. We found him in the 13th sea, which is a lower sea, which we don't have here on Earth. But it's like uh, where the, um, what are those called? Intercontinental pl plates or planes? Uh, continental plates, I think they're called or something. If you use that model, this plate happens to be much lower than all the other plates around it. So it's kind of like a sunken plate uh, with water flowing into it. Supposedly inaccessible because it's so far down. Not like anything we have in our world that you, you could get in, but you wouldn't be able to enjoy it because when you got down there, you would probably be traveled to another post, you know, post, uh, whatever they call this realm, big farm in the sky or whatever. But we got down there. Beautiful, by the way. If you, if you can ever, if you ever get a chance to to uh, go there, maybe in some sort of virtual reality, any sunken realms, gigantic waterfalls, mountains, mist. I guess I picture it, where we were was lush because it was that was the parts that were getting the most light. But I'm sure there's parts that are less lush because of, you know the sunlight's different. But, of course, we were, uh, you know, if, if for story's sake, we were on a lush place but just because it's more, that's what, that's what I thought of. So I don't, I, I don't have time to explain the biology of it, uh, the geology. Oh, also, it's closer to the center of Earth. It makes it more warm, maybe. So there we found the man who loves the sea. The man who loves the sea uh, first was resistant to going back with us. Uh, because a uh, man who loves the sea was a bit stubborn. Then we kind of had a little, uh, like, uh, interaction. Lady Witchbeard and Don Danko admitted they were taking the man who loves the sea, whether he was going or not. But eventually we got the man who loves the sea agree. Save this. If you can't just, there's, we got to save all the seas. There's 13 seas to be saved, and we need your help. So he agreed, Wilts, uh, and then I think he said, well, I can't, a couple of complications at the end of the last episode. Can't, oh, by the way, I can't leave, and also it's impossible to leave. And like all good sleep podcast stories, we said as a, you know, a team trying to figure out problem solving, better do it on, better not do this without a good night's rest. So our characters rested, and now they wake uh, for another tale of Lady Witchbeard, first introduced by our Hollywood announcer, Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, as the ladies, the gentlemen, the boys, the girls, uh, as the friends beyond the binary, it's time to take a trip to the 13th season beyond with another tale. Lady Witchbeard, 
Yeah, splash, splish, magic. Tales from Lady Witchbeard. Thank you. That was magic. Every time you speak, it's magic. Every time your body creaks, so not magic. Uh, I don't know. I think, like, when you, can you not, can we try also not, when you, other than when you're recording, not smiling? Because I thought, I think that was another one of the sounds I've been hearing when I've been recording. Like, do you, I'm just imagining this, but I think it's true. Like, you're lying on my bed with the Antonio Banderas, you know, shoes off, but also I have the extra comforter. Uh, so I don't, you know, that I have my privacy, but, uh, I, I can sense that you're, you're, you're trying to tie, silently check your notifications and occasionally you smile. Probably, you know, you get some text from your family or loved one or somebody witty says something and you smile and I hear this sound. It sounds a bit like I would imagine a wind chime in the home of an angel sounds like. When the angel, when the angel's loved ones visit and their wings accidentally hit the wind chime, like that kind of sound, it's kind of like on Earth, here we could we would it doesn't really capture what it really sounds like twinkling or tinkling, and I'm pretty sure your teeth make some sort of sound like that, or your also your spirit your joyful spirit, which no offense. Uh, makes a noise. I mean, I, I'm just being, it's not, I'm trying not to be judgmental about it. So could you try to just for the next hour and 10 minutes, turn the joy down and maybe not, not, I'm not saying never smile again, but if possible, don't smile uh, physically or on the inside either. Cause I'm pretty sure it'll still make the sound Huh, you're one of the few people, you're one of the only people I know that I have a confirmation based in conjecture that you make a spiritual noise, uh, your soul makes a noise. I've always been thinking it was your fault, but it's really your soul. Your soul has, a, you have a noisy soul, uh, Antonio. Ah, Scooter, I've never been prouder. And I've never been prouder to know my joy sparks the noise so that uh, angels, you know, wind chime and angels' wings would do connect uh, with love. And uh, I'll try not to do that, though. Uh, Tales of Lady Witchbeard. That's Mr. Antonio Banderas. This is Tales of Lady Witchbeard. All right, Lady Witchbeard, Daw, Dundankel. Yeah, I guess it's time for me to tell you of, of all the myths uh, that uh, in about the drain. And so you have a clear understanding of why we can't leave or why I can't leave, but also why none of you can leave physically. Like, I can't leave willingly, and none of us can get out of here. And, I, you know, I haven't told this tale. You know, I, I'm familiar. This is a tale I live in now, a myth. Uh, I'm living within a myth. Uh, but it explains a lot how these thir this 13th sea came to be and the drain, and a lot of others. But I do forget some details, but it is a myth. So, uh, and we can always, I can always, we can always read more about it later. But it starts with the, the goddess, you know, the, there's a multiple, you know, the gods and goddesses and, and powerful beings. And there was this one goddess uh, who loved the sea, and everything in the sea so much, and I can very much relate to that. And uh, she, she always doted on the sea. And I don't know, like, I, like uh, there's a different, you know, wh what you would call that goddess is different for everyone. But for the time being, I'll call her Sea Breeze, just for, for her sake, because I know, like, where, where everybody's from, you might have a different version of this goddess. And then there was also a god of uh, what we would, would, would now, D D D D I'm familiar, I do a lot of reading, so not the same thing for you, Daw, but what we would call a god of Middle Earth, uh, like actually the middle of the earth uh, where there's molten materials, or you might call it the god of uh, 
again, as I've been familiar talking with Daw and Daw talks and Daw's sleep, the uh, big, the god of the big farm, the big farmer, we'll call it for this, uh, this version of the myth. And the big farm really only works. Uh, the big farm, you know, uh, people come to the big farm and they, do, they, you know, eat some grass or they plant some seeds. They bring skills from the time they might have been in the realm of the of Seabreeze's realm. And they they have new skills or they, and they bring those to the big farm and then they move on from the big farm. Which is a spoiler for some people, you know, but I don't know, like, this myth doesn't have to do with where do they go after the big farm, Daw, you put your hand down, I don't know. And this kind of thing, you know, was kept in balance, and uh, at some point, though, Seabreeze uh, thought to herself, uh, she, she had been spending a lot of time just with, uh, she had fallen so in love with the sea, and oh boy, do I relate to this too, of, and all the creatures in the sea, she hadn't been enjoying the fellowship of the other gods. And some would say she lost her way, and she decided that no more, she used all her powers to say no more, no one's going to the big farm she didn't realize that there would have been ramifications for the sea. And uh, the big farmer did, though. Also, the big farmer stopped having anybody coming in, which had ramifications for the big farm. And because the big farmer wasn't in the sea, it said, look at the sea's already, like, uh, it's having an impact on the sea. And Seabreeze just ignored those things. So the big farmer went to the other gods and said, look at this. Uh, and the gods said, work it out or let Seabreeze deal with the consequences. And uh, it was frustrating. It, it wasn't as simple as that. But at some point, the big farmer actually went to Middle Earth uh, and said, okay, how much power can I summon? And, and in the power of this case of gravity started pulling, trying to pull as much uh, uh, as it could towards, like it actually increased the gravity in this area. And Lady Witchbird, I know you have thoughts about that, but, uh, and that's what caused this, uh, it basically pulled the earth deep, closer to Middle Earth. And uh, that kind of created this situation to, to try to attempt to restore the balance because, uh, the waterfalls would do, like, Seabreeze didn't expect it. And so all the waterfalls started flowing over. Obviously, they created a new, uh, 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 new people for the big farm. But it was a little bit too much. And, uh, uh, like, uh, the pendulum had swung too far the other way because, uh, uh, the the kind of deep chaos and, and the strength of uh, the big farmer, like the water started flowing and then it started flowing even into the inner earth, middle earth, the physical middle earth, not just a metaphorical one, being pulled by this stronger pull and threatened to extinguish uh, the fires at the center of the earth, uh, which we, I think we attribute to some of the, well, anyway, not important. And then there was tons of steam, which also, and then Seabreeze was like uh, trying. So then the, there was more chaos because then the, instead of working it out, they kind of had a bunch of arguments. And they went back and forth and back and forth. Now, meanwhile, you know, there was beings just like all of you and, and myself living on uh, living on the land and the sea. There were sea-based beings and... Uh, Earth-based beings, land beings, and they didn't want to passively go like they go. They could see everything. They they understood what was happening, or like within the myths, and so they went to the other gods and said, "What the heck? Uh, you're gonna like look what you, you this cause? Now these two can't even work it out, uh, and we're not real. We don't think that we're, we're like." Uh, We'll work out a solution, just take their powers away. So the gods said, okay. So the gods took their powers away, right? 
of the other two gods, and then things calm down but, but, but with the overall chaos, with the solving of the water pouring into the center of the earth and turning to steam, uh, it did not uh, stop. Uh, like, uh, the hole was still getting filled. And then it was someone uh, with magic and someone with knowledge that came together, a scientist, uh, Layla, and a magic user, I think from a different non-witch realm, but uh, named Doreen. And they came up with this idea of a giant drain, uh, which may seem ridiculous, but... uh, And they called on the gods, of you know, the god of the the steel stuff and the... You know, the mother and the crone and the, the they said, hey, we need help. Uh, we're going to save save this realm of the 13 seas. And to do it, we have to create this giant drain. We're going to put over the hole. And they said, why drain? They said, well, drain will sl- slow down uh, like it's designed to let some water through, but not all the water through. And... Uh, they said, because we found that actually, like the water, uh, like uh, they said, the, the water, like the earth, the geology is figuring itself out and trying to stay in balance. Uh, it just needs a little bit of extra help. And so they put a drain, uh, which is here in the 13th Sea. You can't see it because it's underneath the water. And it's beyond, it's very complicated. Uh, but, uh, because there's other mechanisms, like they said, that help the geology, and some of the geology figured itself out, and I guess the steam becomes condensation, so not all the steam is bad, and some of the steam just shoots back up. Uh, but somehow that was the solution they needed. Uh, wait a second, I have, do have a question. Uh, I'm Don, you know, Don Dankel's got a question. Where did you learn all this? Uh, or where, where You seem to know a lot, and you said there's even more to know that you read about. Oh, the great library, Don Dankel's. There's a great library here. That's where I conducted most of my training, which is the next part of the story, is that uh, there was only one thing with the drain, is that... Uh, is it in a very isolated place, and uh, you know the gods couldn't help uh, forever. They don't want to be involved in the earth. That was what they have learned through this mistake of the other two gods. Uh, and so they said, uh, like, uh, th- this is going to be a place that's not really reachable. I mean, otherwise you had to fly in on it. So, you know, the gods were the, providing a lot of the drain construction help. But once the drain was done, the god said, we're no longer going to be a part of this. Uh, well, we'll give you some tools, uh, some magic and some powers, a library with self-paced courses that has uh, it's very, what you would call, high tech. But we need a human who will be, their aging will change so they could live a long time. But uh, they'll be the dra- They'll have to keep, stay down here and clean the drain. I'm sorry. What? So that's what I do here. That's what I've been down here doing. Is I'm the drain cleaner. Uh, that's what when I removed myself to the Thirteen Seas. It wasn't just to to leave. Uh, it's a secret. But I guess no one comes. It was uh, only a secret because no one would ever know about it. It was a secret to me. The, like up in the 12 seas, you never heard about the drain cleaner. No, these myths sound similar to a lot of myths, like all of them, but uh, Lady Witchbeard, no, I want to hear, keep going about this drain cleaning. So uh, someone has to clean the drain and maintain it, uh, otherwise it would get clogged up uh, or, you know, occasionally needs repair and maintenance, Uh and that does take some powerful magic. That's the magic you've seen me use, uh, help of sea creatures that are here, and uh, that kind of thing. Okay, though, this is uh, interesting to me, uh, you know, because I left my work, like, but as a witch, I've never heard of this, one. And two, if you're the drain cleaner now, who was the drain cleaner before you? 
Right, correct. Don Danko's wondering how is the knowledge so the knowledge is at the library. Yeah, I replaced someone. Uh I just ended up here, but now I say, was I guided here or did I you know, I came here to to get to find out what what was uh but was it fate uh, or was it an accident? Uh, and there was a woman here who had been cleaning the drain for some time. And she taught me her powers. She taught me how to repair, you know, do the basic repairs. I mean, mostly she taught me how to use the library. So, uh, because she, she was very distracted, she said, this is it, my time. You've come to clean the drain. And... Uh, I said, I guess so. And it took some time, you know, for me to learn. You know, I guess I was somewhat of her apprentice, uh, but mostly working through, like, learning. It's not that complicated once you have the powers. And you get more and more power as you complete more and more. Like, it's weird. The library is, you know, made by God. So, so like, uh, when you complete a course, you get a new ability. Also, the drain... I just did a full rehab of it. Your timing is perfect. So, like you hear, I'll use this spell to clear the water. You see how, look look how good. Oh, wow, it's shiny. Yeah, I mean, I do, the shiny is not necessary, but uh, I said to myself, uh, I don't know, I did, it's a scheduled maintenance, uh, full, full rehab. Okay, but... Uh, Okay, so you can't leave because the drain would get clogged. But what happened to the person you replaced? Did they just go to the big farm somehow? Uh, yeah, uh, yes, they did. Uh, they did. Okay, that was a little strange. I'm going to need more information. Okay, well, there's something. This is another kind of tangent, uh, and I know. So there's something called the drain cleaner's conundrum. You're down here alone. Another section of the library is dedicated to this. Uh, you're down here. The whole, all the 13 C's rely on you. Now there are self-paced courses to maintain your self-care. The gods even figured that out. But like, uh, it is a little bit lonely. And uh, I don't know. Whatever by whatever trial and error they did, they found out. Yeah, this is unfortunately a solitary job. But there, like I said, there's ways to help with that. But one of the, dra the drain cleaner's conundrum is you're cleaning the drain all the time. And at some point, it, it, like a little piece of sand gets up in your brain. And it starts moving around up there of uh, what's beyond the drain. Where does the drain go? I clean it all the time. Where does it go? And you say, well, it just goes in different places. And uh, you say, really? Because I've seen things go down there. And uh, big things, small things, everything's things go down there. And sometimes you just stare at the water. So uh, we call it the drain cleaner's conundrum. And the, one of the ways the gods, the goddesses of arts uh, intervene for that. Uh, so they encourage you to make art about uh, the drain cleaner's conundrum. Because you you really, really, the only solution is to go down, like, you want to go down there. But obviously, that's, <laughs> nothing goes down, like, uh, the drain is one of those things that is a direct uh, link to the big farm in the sky. So, you there's physical art, there's musical art, uh, all of the drain cleaners throughout history, poems and fiction and romance about the drains, and then you consume that art, too. That's one of the ways you stay socialized in some sense is connection through the, these other artists and other drain cleaners. But it's a conundrum, so it keeps keeps going, and that's how your time slow. The, the drain always calls, and eventually it, call, it calls you to, 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 to the— I, I would like, uh, we don't, again, that's what makes it— you see, it calls you the big farm. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes, you know, there's been times in history where it's been, you know, like, uh, anyway, I don't want to get too deep. Does that make sense? 
Yes, this is like Don Danko, Daw. So our conundrum beyond the drain cleaners one is if we take you with us, there'll be no one to monitor the drain. Wouldn't the gods just send somebody by fate or something? Like how long would we have? Uh, well, I don't, Lady Witchwood, I don't know, but I've sworn to protect this drain and keep it clean. So I can't, like, that's what I mean. I can't go. I mean, I agreed to go, but, uh, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm laying the groundwork here. Come on. Uh, can you help me out? So you're laying the groundwork, uh, that one of us needs to replace you. You'll go with us. We can't get out, but you would go with us if someone stayed in cleaning the drain. Okay, this is done, Daniel. This I, I, this has been a lot of talk, uh, but it's clear there's a great library. Library's my number one. I love piracy. This is a sea. I love the seas uh, as much as the two of you. Daw, I know you love water. So it's pretty clear. I mean, this is an easy one, Lady Witchred. I, Don Danko, will stay behind. Now, I will form the Guild of the Drain Cleaners, unless there's a rule against that, uh, and intertwine it with the Guild of the P Pirates Guild. And I won't just, Lady Witchbeard, in the future, when things are reestablished, you could send, does, does anybody send you notes in a bottle? I guess no one knew you were down here. But Lady Witch, you have confidence you, you, you know, I'll help, uh, that you'll all get out, but I'll be down here and we'll make a reconnection with that world above. Uh, and this will be the 13th C with a, a guild, uh, the, of the new pirates guild. Don Danko, that's a very, uh, per, per, perfect, uh, makes sense. And so we'll miss you. On our next, so so anyway, that's good. That's solid because we really don't have time uh, beyond that. But that still doesn't change the fact of how do we get out. So, uh, Wilts, there's no, so you know of no one. I guess the the question I was asking myself internally, and I'll just say it out loud. Don Dankel, Daw probably don't answer, but uh, I've never heard of this on the surface world. Don Dankel, you're pretty well read. No, I've never heard of this drain cleaner stuff. Uh, so I would agree, Lady Witchford, that means that no one has carried the story back. Uh, so, you know what? I got to take a walk. Daw and I are going to go for a walk. Daw, let's go for a walk. And I need to focus and figure out how we're going to get out of here. And we could brainstorm it, but... Okay, Daw. Um... I don't know how we're, uh, there's something, there's something not right about all this. I just wanted to talk to you alone. I don't know. My gut is off about a few things. One, there's something with the gravity in my magic that's not right. Uh, I mean, it was able to do some, my magic is limited, which I assume has to do with the power, like the gravity sink or whatever and the powers for the drain. But there's something else that's like, uh, some, like the Wilts just ended up here. Like, it seems like this would be something you would either be assigned to do by the gods or forced to do by the gods. And so to me, it re that really doesn't make any sense uh, at all. Because... Uh, I don't know. There's so, so, so I'm having a little trouble with that, but that's fine because we, we still have, it doesn't change what we need to do. Other than the fact that I don't have all my direct connection to magic, uh, I'm not feeling powerful. So, get it, how do we get out of here, Daw? If if you have any ideas. Uh, I don't know, and I, I guess I'm feeling a little bit of the pressure of the whole, all of the 13 C's. Like, I guess, Daw, I, I don't really talk this way normally, but I'm worried because, and I guess part of it is just me. It's like, what if we are down here while everything unfolds up there? The whole fate of all the 13 C's, the witch realm, 
is uh, right now out of my control and could unfold without my influence. And I feel like I could help. I mean, and also I feel drawn to help and intervene. But is that part of this is we're down here and we really aren't going to be able to get out? Or do I need to let it go and hope that uh, the Pirates Guild is just waiting or some other powerful guild of witches is waiting to intervene? Like, how do you handle this? You're more familiar with this stuff, Daw. So can you help me? Okay, Lady Witchbeard. This is, uh, you're a heroine, so of course you want to intervene and help. Uh, I don't think there's really a lot of movies where, unless it's part of the plot point, where the heroine just uh, says, okay, I'm going to take this, uh, whatever they call it, the third act or the big part, I'm going to take it off, uh, unless they're kind of setting some something else up. But if it was a real superhero uh, like you or a real pirate queen or witch, pirate witch, uh, I don't know. If I lived, if I needed someone to save my sea or my seas or my world, it would be you. So, I mean, it looks like right now you're being asked to give, give up some control. Wait a second. Lady Witcher, did you see, like, uh, so, so I saw something, I could have sworn I saw something really big go down. I've been watching the falls, trying to see stuff. Not that it's, it's not a good idea, by the way. Don't do it. But I saw, I could have sworn I saw some stuff. Uh, now, it may have been my imagination, but look at that floating. Like, the, some of the big stuff is floating off here to the right. So can we just go this way? Because, like, see that thing? Is that what I think it is? Yeah, that's a cauldron, Daw. It, it's a pretty big cauldron. Yeah, let's grab it. It's floating. Holy cow, this is some sort of giant retention pond. Yeah, Daw, this is just some sort of giant retention pond. There's a couple other cauldrons in here. Wo a lot of wood. Some, okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's stay at this area from the... So let's go. Let's grab that uh, cauldron. Look, it made it all the way down the falls. Uh, it's got one or two dings in it. It's like reminds me of Niagara Falls. Did I ever tell you about that? Like uh, that was one of the things I always thought about the barrel over the falls. Uh, people used to do that. I think before there was the internet or TV, though. I think people, even though everybody says people are less responsible now. People would get in these barrels or try to make a metal barrel, a bit like a cauldron, and go and visit Niagara Falls. Really, duh. Yeah. And uh, it's too bad, like, uh, and this cauldron would have been, would be perfect, I guess, in theory, I'm just saying. But we can't go back over the falls, obviously, in a cauldron, so it won't work. Lady which what do you think this retention pond is? Well, Daw, if you could see, there's like a small, it goes into a, it's a pond, it's a retention pond. So there's a small, like you see on the other side, there's gates uh, in a spillway. I, I, I just happened to learn about this one time in witch school. And uh, so I would assume that the drain cleaner, like they open the, like they do something for these larger, it's just for larger things float into this, uh, the way it's designed like the gates at the end, so the the drain cleaner can use the raw materials uh, here to build stuff, to, to have supplies, uh, like uh, probably the library teaches them how to do basic things. And then a few times a year, they like must open part of the drain uh, to like it, it declogs the drain, pre-declogs pre the drain, duh. So, oh, so this stuff, like, will go down the drain, like, uh, in a, but it would go down the drain, like, you open the drain and send the stuff down the drain or something like that. Yeah, duh. Like, it's probably got some 
way of moving it, like the like a crank or something. And there's probably some other like uh, spillways and dams to keep that stuff out. Uh, but oh, I can't help but think this is uh, was so. Oh, Lady Witchwood, you you thinking what I'm thinking? We could, you could cast Cauldron Portal. We could just go in that cauldron and get to uh, the. We can just get out of here. You're right. This is perfect. Just so glad I noticed the cauldron. No, duh. The magic's not working that way. And the, and also there's, there's something. I mean, I guess it's the magic of the drain. But yeah, I can't cast ball, call, but Portal. I tried it. Because I we tried it in a coconut shell and in a clam, even though the clam, like the clam, dog, you should have been there because the clam actually, I think it either sprayed water or tried to kiss me. But I can't cast a cauldron. But if the, the, the Wilts has uh, raw materials, what if we try to go down the drain? In in a in in the, in the cauldron in two cauldrons like a barrel like you talked about. Well, like like uh, like uh, we need to uh, we need to do we we need to get to work. So this is what we need to do. Okay, grab that cauldron. Oh, here comes Don Dankel and Wiltz. They must, Wiltz must have known or sensed it. Uh, yeah, I, Wiltz, do you have another cauldron the same size as this? Lady Witch Weird, I do. Uh, you found the raw materials pond. Uh, we emptied a few times. I know, I know. It makes total sense. Uh, pre clog the drain. I, I like it. Uh, but so we need another cauldron like this. Uh, do you ha- I'm assuming you have a way to seal, like you, you, you have uh, ways, you have some sort of shop, right? We need to seal these two cauldrons eventually together. We're going to have to outfit it. Don Dankel, I need you to outfit this, like, so it's maneuverable. Okay, Lady Witchbeard, like, uh, so Wilts and I, what about, uh, like, uh, you're going to, you, Daw, and Wilts are going to go inside of this? Yeah, so make sure to put some bedding in there or some soft stuff. But I mean, it's a giant. This this cauldron's big, bigger than much bigger than the three of us. The two of them together, we can make it airtight. Uh, I can, I will be able to prepare. Now, we'll tell you, and when I, my my magic's not at full strength. Uh, yes, Lady Witchbeard, uh, it's twofold. There's something happening. Uh, that I'm not sure about either. My magic is not at full strength, but also, yeah, the drain magic, it, it, it tends to, to be protective, uh, like, because it, it, it is beyond, you know, a magic beyond, uh, human form or mammal form. So, uh, like it probably reduces it, but there is something else happening too, Lady Witchbeard, uh, that, uh, I thought it was your magic, though, that was making me feel... No, I don't think so. But so I think I can prepare. So this is what we're going to need to do. Wait, Lady Witchbeard, are we going down the drain? Yeah, we're going to go down the drain. But uh, we're going to prepare first. So I'm going to prepare you for the preparation. And it's not going to be easy. So here's what's going to happen. Don Dankel and uh, Wiltz, you're going to start to design a uh, daw. Maybe you should walk them through this barrel thing. But this is going to be a maneuverable barrel. And uh, Wiltz, I need you to help a little bit on that. But I have to ask you, like, how much do you love the sea? Because... uh, I'm going to need you. Uh, here's what I, what I think. Is, and may, tell me if I'm wrong, Wiltz. If you really love the sea, you you could speak with it and you could speak with everything in the sea. And I'm sure that you communicate in some way. But it doesn't seem like you ever used the sea to communicate with the surface world, uh, the other 12 seas. Uh, like uh, Lady Witchbeard, I don't understand. 
Well, there's like this game that Daw was telling me about called Telephone. And uh, we used to we used to call it uh, Misspoken Spells. We used to do it. In, it's a very similar game where uh, or uh, mixed up shopping list. That was another thing. So what we would do at, at which school when I was a young lass, we would all line up. Uh, and the first person in line, the, the, the instructor, she would give us a list of ingredients. And we would whisper the list of ingredients to the next person, and they would whisper it to the next person, and the next person, and the next person. And then the last person in line would go and gather the ingredients. And, uh, like, then prepare the ingredients, and then the teacher would intervene because every time, uh, even if it was spoken soft, uh, slow, uh, like the ingredients would be incorrect and incorrect in a way that wouldn't have ended with would have ended it not well for the person casting the spell or preparing the potion. And so, this actually doesn't give me a ton of confidence, but maybe we could figure out a way around it. But it was to teach the value of uh, double checking your work, uh, but communicating clearly and collaboratively, not insularly. So I'm wondering if you could do that uh, with the C beyond the drain. Like if you never used it, you never would have thought uh, to talk uh, the way to which we're most. Uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Uh I guess, like, it's something as a drain cleaner's conundrum. It's not so, like, yeah, I, I understand. It's just a bit of a, I, I know the, I, I'm thinking about what you might hear when someone's, uh, like, a brine shrimp. Uh, I mean, no, a brine shrimp going down the drain might not be thinking what you're thinking it's thinking. Like, it might not just think, like, it might think, how am I going to make the most of this? While a mammal might think, uh, I'm going, like, uh, they might have other thoughts about the big farm. What if a brine shrimp has different thoughts? Uh, do, do, do you think you're li you were limited by that? All the drain cleaners were? Huh, Lady Witchbeard, uh, this is the kind of outside leadership thinking, like, uh, no, I never thought about it that, that way. I've been, in some sense, just thinking about it from my perspective as a mammal and a human. And my, like, and, and all the other drain cleaners were humans or mammals, a few, you know, sea based mammals. So, no. Uh, so, what are you asking me? And once you start communicating with the water and whatever's in the water, and see if you could keep a, a constant stream of communication going both ways within the stream that we're going to get in so we know which way to go. I need you to talk, to really love the sea and communicate with the sea so that when we go down the drain, we know where we're going because there's, there's going to be a way. We're going to find a way through. We have to. But Lady Witchbeard, what if it's like a like a really small way or a really warm way? Uh, don't worry, Daw. I'm going to prepare all the magic I can here. I have ideas, so, but I, I have a few things. We, we could become brine shrimp is one thing, but not for very long due to the magic I have at my availability. But... Uh, this is the thing that I talked to Daw about, and I'll talk to all of you about it. And then this is going to be tough, though, because, uh, Daw, you're really going to have to focus because you're going to be steer like Don Danko's going to have to teach you how to steer this, uh, submersible cauldron. And Don Danko, uh, you know, you're going to have to, we'll, we'll have to say our goodbyes at some point, uh, and, Wilts, you're going to really have to focus on talking to the sea and, and, and really parsing all that information out. Uh, and then 
I'm going to have to focus on doing my best. To, 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 so we're all going to be, we'll all have to work together to get, but I have to hope that, uh, like Dawes said, this is a heroine and heroes. Uh, they say yes, uh, even when it, everything else says no. Like, uh, this is the only choice I can make. Uh, whatever, However it turns out, we go down the drain. And we come out of the drain, or we go down the drain, and we go wherever we're going. Uh, this it seems clear to me that this is where I want to put our efforts, and we need each other. I can't control this outcome without you. We can't keep the drain clean and, and without leaving Don Dankel behind. I'll be honest, Wiltz, I don't want to trust your magic because I'm not 100% on you. So we got to, yeah, uh, I, 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 we've got to do this uh, no matter how it turns out. So I think it's time for us to set to work. Uh, oh, you, I put you all to sleep uh, while I was just making my speech. That was my heroic speech, Daw. You're smiling, though, so I think you're listening. But we'll, we're going we're gonna to do it. Not only do we need to do it, to, uh, I want to do it. And I want your help, Daw, and I want your help, Wilts. And I know, well, no, I hope. Uh, hope is enough sometimes. Uh, I hope we'll work together. I feel good about it. Uh, so, yeah, let's rest, and then we'll build the cauldron, and then we'll go down the drain. Good night, Daw. Good night, Don Dankel. Good night, Wilts. Good night, Cauldron. All right, I want to thank everyone that became a patron recently. I want to thank Lynn, Steve, and Vaughn. Thanks, 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 and good night. Nancy, Charlotte, and Stuart. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Erica, Lauren, and Tom. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, good night. Julia, Meg, and Megan. Thanks, 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 and good night. Brandon, Allison, and Molly. Thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Angela, Susan, and Dorothy, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. John, Cindy, and Cray, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Sarah, Caitlin, and Susan, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Julia, Josie, and Julia S., thanks, thanks, and good night. Melissa, Dale, and Tina, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Rachel, Randall, and Tanya, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sasha, Robin, and Susan, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Karen and Vanessa, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Sabrina and Brendan, thank you, thanks, and good night. Uh, this will be the existence of free podcast. Get people to support the show on Patreon, support our sponsors, refer people to the podcast. So that's amazing, and, uh, you yeah, know, I'm... I'm uh, I think that's it. I really appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, um, sorry, I got mixed up there. Usually I don't get mixed up at the end of the show cause it's so easy, but it, oh yeah, I, I appreciate it. And, uh, here's a little bit more about uh, referring people to the show. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, BetterHelp. And whatever you're dealing with right now, BetterHelp is there to help with you, whether it's grief, relationships, stress, getting back into the outside world. That's been challenging for all of us. And if you've been dealing with some challenges, online therapy might be for you. BetterHelp is secure online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with a licensed professional therapist. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own accredited therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. You don't have to sit in a waiting room. You don't have to look up directions. The therapists have a broad range of expertise, which may not be available in your area. The service is available for clients worldwide. And you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. I know BetterHelp works because I know people right in my personal circle that use it. And it's so accessible 
it's affordable. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy, and financial aid is available. So visit BetterHelp.com slash sleep with me and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. And that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Sleep With Me is sponsored by BetterHelp and our listeners get 10% off their first month of online therapy at BetterHelp.com slash sleep with me. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash sleep with me. Thanks, everybody.